button here. All right, so now we're officially recording. Um, the, we're gonna, I think it's actually covered in the slides here. So I'm, I'm gonna um, break down what, what we're gonna cover here tonight. It, it's gonna be kind of three major parts. We're gonna do the typical slideshow lesson where we kind of review the concept and, and talk about, talk about, you know, the, the overall approach and, and give you some tips there. But then between Scott and myself, we're going to do kind of a, a, a mock phone call. He's going to play the supplier. I'm going to basically be myself and, and let you guys see how I approach getting supplier accounts. Um, and he's going to be a bit of a pain in the butt. He's going to be one of those suppliers that doesn't really want to give me a wholesale account. So I'm going to try to talk him into it, uh, which I mean, it, it doesn't matter who you are. It, it doesn't always work. But but, you know, this the the stuff we're going to teach you here tonight is, is going to give you your best shot at actually getting supplier accounts with with suppliers that don't generally drop ship or or are more challenging to, to convince to drop ship. So. Um, so Scott, do you, uh, do you know the go to webinar control panel well enough to watch the answer queue there? I've been playing with it a bit here while you were talking there, Dave. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> um, all right. And then, like I said, at the end, we'll do open Q and a, we, we estimate that the first couple parts here will take 20, maybe 30 minutes at the longest, depending on, on how many tangents we go off on. I know Scott's good at that and I, I can be too. Um, and then the second half of the hour, we'll just leave open for, for Q and A there's, we, we've set up the slideshow and, and, and we plan to do the mock phone call kind of based on the normal, most common things you'll face. Uh, but obviously there's a ton of different things that you can come upon and, and we're, we're constantly, you know, coming upon new issues and roadblocks and stuff that, that we haven't before in the past, in the past 12 years of, of doing e-commerce stores. So, uh, people will have their questions and, and that'll give you a, a chance to ask anything that, that you want to specifically ask about your niche or, or things that you've run into. So. Anything else, Scott, before I get rolling on this? No, I'm very excited to get going. All right, cool. All right, so like I said, part two is going to be the slideshow. And I'll, I'll run you through this, and, and Scott will step in with, with questions and interjections and additional comments and stuff along the way. A lot of this, if you've been through phase two of our training, especially if you're a pro member and, and you have access to absolutely everything in the training, a lot of this is going to be review, but but we'll try to we'll try to touch on some additional stuff that's not even in the training. So, all right. So the overall overview, the overall concept here is if we want to build an e-commerce store that uses drop shipping to, to fulfill the orders. These are, these are kind of the steps you want to take. You want to start off by, you know, obviously we've already, we've already decided our niche. We've, we've already decided what our product line is, or at least what our main keyword phrase is that represents a product line. So what we want to do is slap that into Google and try to identify at least two or three specialty e-commerce sites similar to what you plan to build uh, you know the sites that are going to be your top competitors when you're in this market and you want to just make a list of all the brand names they carry now the reason this is super important is because the vast majority of specialty stores online like what you're going to have use the dropship model for fulfillment um, and even if they don't most of them started off using drop shipping. So the simple fact that the, these specialty shops are at the top of Google and carry these top brands within this market is an indicator that there's a dang good chance that, that these brands are drop shippable products that you can get through the drop ship model. Now, after you've identified a bunch of brands and in some markets, there's going to be zero or one brands. I mean, in some, in the occasional market, it, there's going to be nothing but generics and the brand names are going to be kind of made up and you'll, you'll see that um, when that's the case, uh, it doesn't happen very often, but every once in a while there really isn't brands and, and that's okay. This, this approach still works. 
Um, hey, can I interrupt a second yeah, here? Of course. Um, are we supposed to be seeing the slideshow and the go to webinar viewer? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> there we go. All right, cool. Okay. Well, wow, just so because fun. I actually took the time to create the slides, let me go back through. <laughs> <laughs> this is what this is what you're supposed to be seeing the entire time we were waiting and, and introing. Here's the itinerary: part one, slideshow; part two, mock call; part three, open Q and A, <laughs> slideshow lesson. And there's the link to to um, phase two of the training: how to source products. And this is where we were. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Appreciate that. Okay. I just wasn't sure. I saw yeah, that. Yeah, that would be bad to get all the way through the slideshow without showing <laughs> the slides. Uh, Whoops. <laughs> all right. So part one was gather up the brand names. In most markets, like I was saying, you're going to have anywhere from a handful to a dozen or so brands that most of, if not all of the top retailers seem to be carrying. And like I said, Usually, most, if not all, of these are drop shippable if you can just find the source. Uh, step two is to actually locate the manufacturers of the brands. And here, here in an upcoming slide, we'll talk about the difference between manufacturers and brands and distributors and all these all these buzzwords that that you may or may not be familiar with. But basically, a manufacturer is the company that oversees the creation of that brand product. Um, for example, Sony, the company, the company Sony manufactures the Sony brand. And sometimes, sometimes the manufacturer's company name is the same as the brand name. And sometimes it's not. Um, but right. bottom line is you just want to figure out who actually is responsible, who owns that brand um, and try to find their website and hopefully their, their contact details almost always the manufacturer will have a website. It, almost always they'll be awful, but they will almost always have one. Um, and pretty much 100% of the time, they're going to have contact details. Sometimes they even have dealer applications online, which is ideal. And we'll talk about that more later here. Uh, number three is to actually reach out to them. And obviously not yet. We're going to talk about the prereqs and, and you know get you prepared for the phone call because um, – like I mentioned before, this is this is literally like the most anticipated webinar we've ever done. We've been, we've had people asking since the beginning of Store Coach to to do a webinar on this. I think people are just in general very worried about you know trying to get suppliers. the the three The three big challenges are choosing a niche, sourcing products, and getting your site ranked. And we we cover you know, choosing a niche and getting ranked really well in the training and with the tools we have for pro members. But the the getting, you know, sourcing products is the one thing that really freaks people out that people kind of feel like they're on their own. You know, we can't really build a tool to, to help you call suppliers. This is something that you kind of have to work up the nerve to do. And, and if you have social anxiety like me, it's not the easiest thing to do. So hopefully this empowers you to actually do that. Um, number three here, you're going to want to reach out to them by phone is really best. Um, if there's a dealer app on their website, the ideal approach to take is to actually fill out the dealer app, submit the dealer app, and then you can use the fact that you submitted a dealer app as an excuse to call them. So you can wait anywhere from an hour you know, up to 24 business hours, maybe about the same time the next day, give them a call and just say, Hey, I, you know, I, I submitted a dealer app. I'm, I'm so-and-so from such and such company. And I just wanted to make sure that went through and, and it's being processed. And a lot of times that not only gives you a, a, an excuse to call them, but it gets the ball rolling. It, it, it lets them know that you're serious. It's kind of like following up on a resume when you're applying for a job, it kind of makes you stand out and makes them look at you more closely and consider you, you know, more so than, than the other applicants. So, Right. I'll often at that stage also ask them if there's anything that I can do to help them, uh, you know, move the process along better or anything that I can provide them with that, that maybe they're missing that they need. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you want a willingness to work with them to make the you – want, you want them to feel like – 
you're making their job easier. Yeah, and it also help you. It help also makes you. you look like you're you've been doing this for longer and your experience. So you know, they, they, there's really no reason for them to not give you an account. It's kind of run of the mill for you. You know, do you need do you need any, any additional documentation or, or whatever it might be? Um, and number four, if you're denied. Um, keep in mind that this is the root. This is this is the brand, the the actual creator of the product line. So there's always distributors, and usually, usually distributors carry dozens, if not hundreds or thousands, of brand names. So even if you can't get the actual manufacturer of the product to drop ship, I mean, a lot of the time, the the manufacturer only sells to distributors, and we'll talk about distributors more on, on one of the upcoming slides. But sometimes going with the distributor is better. It's better than even having the actual manufacturer dropship for you because the margins can oftentimes be just as good or better. And they give you access to all the brands you want to carry in that niche from one source instead of having to deal with seven different manufacturers to get seven different brand names. So. We'll talk about that more. Um, and then also there, there's uh, there's alternatives to, to doing a dropship retail site. Um, and even if it's just a temporary stepping stone, you can do an affiliate product site um, until you get your traffic level up. Or you can even do, you know, a content ad based site until you get your traffic level up. Because even the even the brands, even the manufacturers and distributors that refuse to drop ship for you up front, they're, they're going to have a change of heart. Most of them are going to have a change of heart when you're actually a player in that market. When you're actually showing up, you know, number two in your market for bird cages, they're going to go, hmm, maybe we should work with this guy, even if they already turned you down. So, In the last year, one of my websites, I've had four different manufacturers who turned me down initially at the beginning. Um, contact me asking if I would add their products. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, it happens with almost every store we do, um, whether we contacted them and, and were denied up front or whether we didn't even bother up front because our, our, uh, the, the approach we take is we really only need one good brand to get the ball rolling and, and to get our site launched and start getting some sales and, and getting some traffic. And then a lot of times, the other brands will come to us and ask us to consider selling their products before we even get around to reaching out to them. So you really only need one to begin with. All right, so here are the definitions I mentioned before. It's it's super important that you actually know these and have these memorized before you reach out to, to a potential supplier or really reach out to anybody in your market for anything related to your store because these are really basic definitions within the supply chain and, and you're just going to look like a noob or maybe a moron if <laughs> if you don't understand these words or, or you totally misuse these words. So a retailer is basically what you will be a retailer or a reseller or to the manufacturer oftentimes they'll call you dealers for some reason manufacturers and distributors will typically call you dealers but you are the retailer you are the company or the person that's actually getting the products at wholesale and, and selling them at full retail to to the end user and again end user customer consumer all those all those terms are kind of interchangeable um, the brand, like we mentioned before, is simply a product line that has a branding. Um, it just has a label. Uh, the manufacturer is the company who actually creates that brand. Um, and like I mentioned before, sometimes the brand name and the manufacturer name are the same, but sometimes they're not. I'd say it's probably, I don't know, Scott, I'd say 50-50. Probably. I can think of a perfect example is Kraft Foods. Um, if you buy a Tombstone pizza, make it. If you buy a DiGiorno's pizza, if they make it. If you buy California Pizza Kitchen, they make it. Mm -hmm. the, the, all those three are brands, but the manufacturers craft foods. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So, it, and it, it obviously depends on the market you're in. You'll see it less often in small specialty markets. M more often than not, the brand will will match the manufacturer's name because you know that's their one and only product line. That's their one and only focus. Um, but 
in bigger markets, like the example you just gave in, in the food market, I mean, craft has been around for what a hundred years. <laughs> so right. they, they've had some time to create. They, they, they own everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and really another, you'll also hear people refer to brands as labels, um, a, 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 a private label or white label or branding. All those terms are kind of used interchangeably, but the point, the thing you need to remember is the brand is just simply the sticker. It, it's it's the, the logo or the name that's put on the products that you want to carry. The manufacturer is who oversees that. Whether they make them in a factory inside their building here in the United States, or more often than not, they oversee the manufacturing of the products in a factory in China um, you know, or somewhere else, and then they bring them over. It doesn't matter. If they oversee the production of the brand, they're the manufacturer, period. Now, a distributor, and a lot of times for some reason people call distributors a wholesaler, which really doesn't make sense to me because if you're getting products at wholesale products or at wholesale prices, that supplier is is a wholesaler. But anyway, you'll you, you'll hear people refer to distributors as wholesalers. But distributors, like I mentioned before, what they are is really a middleman between small retailers like us, specialty shops like us. And the manufacturer and the way the way I like to look at this, the example I like to give is using the pet industry. Like if I was if I was going to sell, you know, dog beds, almost always the manufacturer makes a million of those things at a time and they sell a 100,000 to each of their 10 distributors. And they don't they don't sell to, to small retailers like us that want to buy somewhere between one and five at a time. So the job of the distributor is they buy in huge bulk quantity at huge discounts, better discounts than we can get as small as small resellers. And then they distribute smaller quantities to pet shops um, in this example. Um, and we we are basically the online equivalent of a pet shop. So we want to just buy one or two of those things at a time. We, we don't want to buy a thousand of them at a time. So the distributor is is the middleman between the manufacturer and, and a retailer like us. Um, and the URL at the bottom there is a full like two pages on these definitions and and a lot of other supply chain related info. So you might want to check that out. All right. So. Jumping back to actually reaching out and, and making that phone call that everybody's nervous about <laughs> to a potential supplier, here are kind of the, the prereqs that, that you're going to want to have in place um, to, to, to not only increase your chances, but empower you to, to make you feel confident making that phone call. Um, you typically are going to, I mean, all three of these are kind of a case by case you need to make a judgment call for yourself based on the size of the market and, and, you know, your state, your region that you live in. But typically it makes sense to, to register a business entity or at least create a DBA, um, which is free or very cheap in most states. Um, and oftentimes, depending on your state, and all this info can easily be found online. In fact, the, the blog post I'm linking to below has links to all all of the resources you need to actually do this but for some reason people are scared of creating a business entity and it's absolutely a piece of cake i mean it's in most states now um and even in most countries now it's it's like an online form that takes you 10 minutes and you get it within a week or two so don't be intimidated by creating a business it it, it actually makes you look a lot more legit when, when you reach out to suppliers we we wouldn't even consider you know starting an online store without having some sort of business entity in place um the the some states require you to have a reseller permit like a sales tax kind of reseller permit and usually wherever you register your business, there's, it, it'll basically tell you, you need that too. And it's another, you know, simple application to fill out. So just keep that in mind. Some States it's not necessary at all. Like I think your state, Florida, Scotty, I don't think you guys need sales tax permit. Do you? We need the sales tax permit, but we don't need a business. Oh, license. other way around. Yeah. So it, yeah, it'll it, it cost, uh, 
of nothing to get the sales tax permit. They give those away for free in Florida, which all states should do since you're giving them free money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't think but it costs anything in Idaho either. States that charge that. Uh huh. Um, so number two here is registering a domain name, um, and and we'll talk a bit more as we go further here about actually having a, a presentable site. Um, you know, based on based on how intimidated you are by the manufacturer the, or distributor that you're reaching out to, uh, we generally don't worry about getting our domain name before. I mean, really, really, you can think up a domain name and make sure that it's not registered and say that it's your domain name if they happen to ask. Uh, but we generally don't worry about registering a domain name beforehand. But like I said, um, if you're approaching a major player, a, a big brand, and and you know that they're going to ask about it, or maybe you've downloaded an online application, and and you're you're worried about getting your dealer app approved with this distributor or manufacturer, it's probably a good idea to do number two and number three here: register a domain name and create some sort of placeholder site. Uh, usually, I tell you, I'm not as, I'm not quite as confident as Dave, and never have been, and I've been <laughs> in sales my whole life. Um, but I, I personally get the domain name myself. I figure the worst I'm going to lose is 15 bucks buying a domain name and then not do it. With it. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it just makes me feel better. I'm like, what if they look it up and they see it's for sale? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. I would say, I'd say more often than not, the, the person in charge of dealer accounts with the manufacturer or the distributor usually doesn't even ever ask me. Uh, and that might be just because of how I approach it. And you'll hear how I approach it when we do the mock-up call. And I recommend doing something similar for yourself. But the way I approach it, you know, telling them that this is what my company specializes in and this is the next specialty niche that we've selected and we're about to dominate in on Google, um, you know, and we want to feature your brand because you're one of the top, most reputable, respected brands. With that approach, you're, you're kind of telling them straight up, uh, you know, we, we we're ready to get started here, but we don't have a domain name yet. Um, but again, you, you kind of, and that's why it's challenging to, to make training on this. It's so different case by case, and you just kind of have to make judgment calls. And honestly, uh, in the past, when, when we were learning a lot of this stuff and just, you know, tromping our way through it, uh, we, we would, we'd apply, get rejected, and then we would get our ducks in a row and we would apply again and sometimes get rejected and get more prepped and apply again and get accepted either that or we you know go with an alternative we, we'd create an affiliate site or create like a content advertising type site get our traffic level up and if they haven't come to us by then then we approach them and say hey we get 150 unique visitors a day looking for your specific product line. You know, we're asked about your product line all the time. You, basically, you're leaving money on the table if you don't let us sell your products. And usually at that point, they find a way, whether it's making an exception in drop shipping for you or hooking you up with the distributor that they were unwilling to tell you about before. But usually the traffic is the key. As soon as you have a site up, have, you know, have your own brand name, aka domain name, and, and have some traffic, they, they at that point want you. <laughs> the reason they're reluctant up front is because, you know, coming from, I can tell you this from experience, having had a few different manufacturing companies of our own now, probably one out of every 25 applicants ever makes a sale. So the reason they're reluctant to just hand out dealer accounts is because they think that you're wasting their time. And, and it, it, if you don't have a domain name yet and you don't have any experience dominating in, in other, you know, quote unquote, dominating in other niches in the past, they're, you're not selling them. They're not, they're not excited to, to spend 10, 15 minutes going through your application and putting you into their system, knowing that there's a 99% chance you're never going to place a single order with them. 
So you just have to a keep lot that of this has to do with the type of person you're talking to too. If yeah. they're like, if their income is based upon their sales and how much the company makes, for instance, if you're actually talking to the owner, he's going to be a little more interested. It's in easy to get them excited. Taking the chance <laughs> to spend five whole minutes of his time setting up an account. Yeah. If you're talking to an eight dollar an hour employee that's just there collecting a paycheck, they're a little tougher, believe it or not. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And really, you have no reason to be intimidated by either. Um, yeah. So, actually, are you watching the question queue, Scott? It looks like there's several I questions in there. The question queue. Okay. <laughs> Figure out how to answer them. Well, so, I mean, if if they make sense to cover later when it when it no, I, I, I get that. It's just somebody was asking for links to get posted actually to the Q and A here. I think I just figured out how to do that. As you can tell, sometimes <laughs> we're all learning things here. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So I, I, I'm substituting for 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 um, Kevin and Mike right now. I'm not sure. I heard some rumor that they were creating a sign to put in front of a house to make it look like a store so they could contact a supplier and <laughs> they, they caught a cold or something. Yeah, they're busy on Photoshop pretending like they have a storefront. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the only other thing I want to mention on the prereqs here before we move on is um, for, for some foreign, foreigners, you're going to have some additional road roadblocks. And we have a link here to, to our, our detailed business setup guide for foreigners. Because if you're outside the USA and you want to get drop ship suppliers that are located inside the USA, you really have to get a US business entity. And, and that, that business guide, that business setup guide is going to walk you through those steps. Yeah, I'm trying to like get that link here real quick. But anyway, keep going, sir. All right. Yeah, I was going to say it's recorded. <laughs> Dave. So they can always they can always replay it if they need to, and you can just search on Store Coach and and find that yeah, business that's setup guide that's too. What I'm doing right now, my friend. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> the whole goal here is to source wholesale products, and like I've said many times before, it doesn't really matter how. It doesn't it doesn't matter if it's from the the root from the actual manufacturer of the brand it doesn't matter if it's a distributor it doesn't matter if it's a company that's set up strictly to be a drop shipper and they buy in small quantities from a distributor or the manufacturer it doesn't even matter if it's one of your you know future competitors a, a retailer that's willing to give you a coupon code and and let you buy at a discounted amount just you know, while you get your foot in the door and and start to build up your traffic, as long as you can actually make margins, you are you know you're officially sourcing products at quote unquote wholesale prices. As long as you can make money, that's wholesale. Um, so I mean, really, this this slide is just your pep talk. <laughs> you you really have absolutely nothing to lose and, and you don't even have to go face to face with these people. You know what I mean? You, you don't even need to actually walk in and, and go through the awkwardness of, of con, you know, talking with somebody um, like a door to door salesman has to, it's, it's over the phone. I mean, you, you, you literally have nothing to lose. If they shut you down, you're at the same point you're at right now. You, you've lost nothing. And, and like we've already discussed, there's some pretty good alternatives to, to drop shipping. You can do an affiliate product store for now. You can do an AdSense content site for now. You can move to another niche for now. I mean, you, there's almost always other brand names to try to source. And a lot, a lot, I'd say now, today, this was not the case in 2003 when I got started. A lot, most of the most of the suppliers back then that I called said, "What is drop shipping? I've never heard of that." Today, in most of these specialty niches, the the majority, I would say two thirds of the brands that you're going to see on specialty shops in your market, they are drop shipped, and they're going to know exactly what you're talking about. They're not even going to want to hear your spill in your introduction. They're just going to say, "Fill out the dealer app, and we'll get you approved." Yes, we drop ship. So there's really no reason to be intimidated or worried. All right. Um, I think uh, the only thing I, I'd say is I learned this in sales. Like I said, I spent most of my life in sales and for many different companies selling many, many things. And 
I was nervous going into every single house because you never knew a house or business or whatever I was doing. And you just really never knew what you were going to get hit with. Over time, um, you're going to screw up here and there um, mm -hmm. and lose something because of it. But as long as like you reflect upon that and say, what was the best answer? Or go to the forum and ask people, what do you say if uh, you're asked this? And there's so many people that will help you on the forum. Um, just find the answer so the next time you get it, you're ready. The other thing, um, and I, I mentioned this to Dave earlier in a private conversation, he said Mike actually did it, is sometimes it's best not to um, approach these um, suppliers, the person you're talking to as the owner of the website, but instead as a purchasing agent uh, that is also in charge of setting up a retail account. That way, if you get something that stumps you, say, well, I'm not really sure. Uh, can I talk to the owner and get back to you with that? Yeah. That gives you an out. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a good approach to take to just say, I'm, I'm in charge of, of setting up dealer accounts and, and sourcing products for StoreStream LLC or whatever your company name is. And that's the way Mike ap approaches it when he reaches out to get supplier accounts for for StoreStream LLC, our our parent company that that runs a network of, of e-commerce stores. So, like Scott says, if they if they ask you something that catches you off guard and you don't know how to respond, you can just simply say, you know what, I I I'm going to see the owner tomorrow. Um, let me ask him, and I'll get back to you tomorrow. And you don't have to throw a guess out there and, and find out that you're totally wrong and you look like a moron. <laughs> Another right. thing and to keep in hit the forum or, or yeah. if you're one of the private coaching students, that's me. Or uh, if you're, um, or if uh, you know, and sometimes you can just sit there and think for a bit and then go like, oh, this is what I need to say. Yeah. Oh yeah, for so, sure. You know, whatever works for you. Yeah, another thing to keep in mind too is uh, in a week, this person's not even going to remember talking to you or what your name was. So even if you even if you bomb pretty good, you can call them back in a couple of weeks after you've gone through a few other phone calls and other potential suppliers. And they're honestly, there's about a five or ten percent chance they're going to remember you at all. <laughs> so I, yeah, I that's really a wouldn't great, great, worried. great point. And that, not only that, you may talk, call there two months later, and it's a totally different person. That person didn't work there anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But they're never going to remember you. A lot of these places are literally getting, this is why they become so jaded. They get 20, 30, 50, 100 of these calls a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're not going to remember <laughs> you. One of all of them. <laughs> yep. Um, so let's talk about some phone call keys here, and I probably – need to move a little bit faster since we're already like past the halfway point <laughs> and we should be to Q and A's now and we haven't even gotten to the mock phone call. Um, <laughs> but some, some, that's what happened when you get us to us. <laughs> yeah. Um, so some phone call keys here, really the only thing you have to prep a at all is your introductory statement, which is, literally like a paragraph or two and you'll hear mine when we do this mock phone call in a minute here but that's really all you have to prepare after that everything else is just simple conversation it's just you know how long have you been in business you know it's it's all it's all just simple you know questions after that you don't have to have you don't have to have a book of info ready to to you know spill as you go and also keep in mind you're 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 a marketer you you need to exaggerate the truth <laughs> i mean if if i hadn't exaggerated the truth on on the first 50 supplier phone calls i did I, I probably wouldn't have gotten a fraction of the, the supplier accounts that I got. So always keep that in mind. Um, and, and they're not, you, I personally don't feel like you need to feel bad about exaggerating the truth. I mean, you need to sell yourself and it's not going to hurt anybody. It's, it's one of those adult white lies that isn't going to hurt anybody. Your, your goal is to legitimately be a reseller of their products and make them money and make yourself money. So it's not like you're trying to deceive them for the wrong reasons. I mean, you're just selling yourself and, and exaggerating a bit to, to make that happen. I've never felt bad about it. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, this comes down to confidence more than anything. Yeah. You have to really just be confident. If they feel like you're confident, they feel very, very good about you. Um, and if you make Personable. them feel good about themselves, which is my butter article, which you can tell them about later, but <laughs> mm -hmm. it's it's all about making them feel good about you, and uh, people will feel good about you if you make them feel good about themselves as well. So it's... Yep. Um, it's if you're scared, don't be scared. They, it's, it's, who are they? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, they're in a month. They don't even remember who you were. Yeah, and they're they're in the same position as you. I mean, either either they're an hourly employee and they couldn't care less, or they're an owner of a small company, which I mean, they they want more resellers of their products. So either way, it, there's there's really no reason to be intimidated. Um, Tip number two here is to save that spill, save your introductory statement for the right person. I, I can't tell you how many times I've told a secretary all about our business and all the details of it and how great we're going to do selling their products. And then they say, oh, you want a dealer account? Let me get you over to the right person. And I mean, I've even had situations where I've done my spill three times by the time I got to the right person. So make sure you're actually talking to the person that can set you up with an account before you give them the spill. Otherwise, you'll be like exhausted and, and <laughs> out of energy by the time you're talking to the right person. Um, always be polite, even if the phone call doesn't go how you want it to go, because you never know what it could turn into. I, I've had, I've had, um, you know, people where I'm basically in a nice, polite way, tar trying to talk them into giving me a dropship account for 20 or 30 minutes. And they're saying no the whole way. And then at the end of the phone call, they say, you know what, you seem like a really good guy. I, I, I'll go ahead and give this a shot. Whereas if I would have gotten sour and, and bet all irritated because they won't give me a dropship account, that it would have never gone there. I've even had I've even had suppliers call me back a week later and say, you know what, we've we've talked and we're going to give you a shot. You 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 seem like a positive energy person. You you seem like you might be able to do a good job with this. It's a little bit of extra work for us, but but we're going to give it a shot. So always be polite, even if they straight up say no, even if they're rude. Just just be polite, professional, personable fun, nice. I mean, you want to be professional. You don't want to, you don't want to swear. You don't want to, you know, say anything crude or, or what might be offensive to somebody. But at the same time, you want to be personable and fun and, and, and a positive energy, even if you're not really like that in real life. <laughs> All right. 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 Like me. All right. Now let's talk about the three biggest potential roadblocks. The, the, the three things that you're going to, you're going to run into most often that, people basically don't know how to answer. Um, and, and we're, we're probably going to cover one or one or two of these in the, in the mock call, depending on how, how, uh, Scotty improvs it as the supplier. But the first one is they tell you, we only sell in bulk. We, we do not drop ship. We do not sell onesie twosie. Um, the first possible solution is, oh, that's fine. You know what? I, I usually actually prefer to buy things in bulk and, and, you know, it typically gives me better margins, but we are just entering this market and we kind of want to test the waters. We don't want to buy a bunch of inventory that we don't know if we can sell. We don't really know what will sell best for us. So really as a way to test this, your, your brand and this market, can we just temporarily do some drop shipping until we kind of get our bearings and, and figure out what's going to sell best. And honestly, I don't think I've ever had a company later on say, Hey, you're still drop shipping. We need you to start buying in bulk. If you, yeah, can, never if you can convince them up front to give, to do a trial of drop shipping with you, um, you, you have a drop ship account from there on out 99% of the time. Um, and you may find out down the road that like you actually can get a substantially cheaper price by buying in bulk, and you may want to do that. And then yeah. Maybe use fulfillment by Amazon or something. Yeah, and your anyway. your your company might be doing well enough by then that you want to buy in bulk anyway. So just right. to increase your margin. I did that with my first successful store. Yep. Uh, possible solution number two is they don't really get what you mean by drop shipping. And for some reason, the word drop shipping has a negative connotation with a lot of people. They, they hear it and they, and they think scam, you know, bad, and they don't really understand what drop shipping is. And uh, we've had, we've straight up had suppliers that, that retail that say that they won't ship products out 
one by one. And it's like, you retail these products, you are you shipping them out this. one by one. <laughs> so, I mean, make sure they understand drop shipping that might convince them. Um, and, and even if, if they still won't budge and they are an online retailer, a lot of times we can talk them into a coupon code. We could say, Hey, we understand that you're nervous to take the time to set us up. So can you give us a 30% off coupon code? And you can treat our orders just like your retail orders. And it doesn't add any extra work to your system. We're paying for product before you ship it out. We're just using our own custom coupon code that we won't share with anybody. Maybe later on we'll buy in bulk from you. Or maybe you can quote unquote drop ship for us. Even though they don't realize that they really already are. But say treat me like one of your retail customers. Give me a coupon code. Um, and like it says here, if all else fails, ask them who their distributors are, because almost every manufacturer that actually moves a lot of wholesale product sells most of that product to distributors and distributors are far more open to drop shipping than, than old school manufacturers are. In fact, most distributors are already drop shipping, whether they call it that or not. Yeah, I, I let me just jump in real quick here. Sure. I have had a couple instances where a supplier has told me we do drop ship, but we insist that uh, customers first order be X amount of dollars for so many products. Mm -hmm. and in that case, if you've got the money and say they say you have to have a $500 first order, say um, I've been able to tell them, okay, I'll send you the 500 right now, but I still need those uh, products individually shipped out. Can you do that? And yeah. most of the time they say, sure. Yeah, just I, I want you to bank that money rather than you shipping them to me, me shipping them to customers. Bank that money and use it for my first 10 dropship orders. Right, it's a draw account. Yep, so more more often than not, they'll say, yeah, sure, we don't care whether you're banking it or ordering $500 worth of product now. Another thing to keep in mind, too, is if you have – if you have 11 brand names on your list and this is, you know, one of the first manufacturers you're reaching out to, just, you know, tell them, okay, sounds good. Make a note and then call the other manufacturers and see what distributors you end up talking to. Because a lot of the time brand A will tell you, oh, you need a $500 opening order. And, and again, the reason they're doing that is because most people that place that, that they take the time to set up dealer accounts would never order anything. That's why they're requiring that upfront exactly. amount. Um, but a lot of the time, by the time you're done making your six or seven or eight phone calls, you have a distributor account that you can source those products through with as good or better of, of margins. So screw that. There's no reason to go back and, <laughs> and make that deposit with that brand when you already have it available through one of your distributors. So, and that kind of goes hand in hand with this next potential roadblock. Occasionally you'll have, and really number two here and the next one are, are really the same thing. We only sell to physical stores or we only drop ship for select large online retailers. Um, when, when it's a physical store in the past, a lot of times we've used solution number one. We've said, oh, we are a physical store. That's funny. We're a little boutique and we give them our, our you know, office address because we have offices outside of our home. A lot of you won't have that option, but there's there's virtual addresses for twenty dollars a month. There's PO boxes. I did that before. You can get one at a UPS store for like about twenty bucks a month. Mm -hmm. It shows up as being in a strip mall, but you can't even see that it's a UPS store. Yeah. If you Google Map it. Yeah. Yep. And it'll yep. say 1945 Elm Street Suite. 365. Yeah, typically, address. typically they'll give you a box number, but if you replace box with the word suite, it looks like a, a storefront address and the mail is still going to get to your box. So Yeah, I think I did a, what if, with UPS, they, gave, they called it a suite. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, some of them will even do that. They'll call it a suite in the first place. So, And I've had a box that I've called a suite and all my mail made it to it anyway. So um, uh, option number two here is to convince them that you're bigger than you are. And I, my, my sales pitch that, that I give retailers or, or, um, suppliers today up front is basically the same sales pitch I gave them in 2003 before I had sold a single product online. Um, I mean, obviously, obviously a lot of you can't say that you sell millions of dollars worth of products online. And you have dozens and dozens of stores and have had, you know, a hundred stores in the past. But you know what? I gave them that impression 
back in 2003 before I had done any of that. The, the sales pitch hasn't changed much and it works well because like I said, they don't want to waste their time setting you up if you're never going to sell a product. But if you can do a good job of convincing them is, uh, of this is what you do, this is what you specialize in. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the wholesale dealer sourcing person for XYZ company. And this is what we specialize in. We, choose, we, we find specialty niches. We know that we can get to, to page one of Google to number one in Google and get tons of traffic. We do it in niche after niche. And this is the next niche we're moving into. Are you on board? Do you want us to sell a ton of your products? Or are we going to be selling your competitors products? Obviously in a nicer way than that, but that's, that's what you want to portray. That's what you want to get across. Basically they're yeah, missing. I think like the way I phrase it is, well, we've already got, um, other, uh, manufacturers that, um, yeah. We're going to be listed on the site, but we would prefer to feature your products. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're um, a top brand name. We, we want yours. We, we've already sourced others, but yours is key to us. Yours is, you know, most important to us because I'm buttering you up right now. Your brand's amazing. <laughs> you're amazing. And, and my very first well. web store, incidentally, I, I lied, but remember I have a sales background. Um, <laughs> But I, I told them that I had built the website and um, optimized it and got it up in the search engine for a company that I was working for at the time. There's no way for them to know that. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. And then solution number three here, again, is, is the solution number three from the previous one. If they retail online and they won't drop ship for you, ask for a discount code. And again, if all else fails... Ask if they have distributors. Uh, like that I said, for discount codes, a very good tip, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's something we we've only been recently doing the past year or so. I've never thought of that before. Yeah, it works dang good. Honestly, we got the idea because we had a retail site that we wanted to drop ship. You know, we we had a private label and we wanted to drop ship for for folks like us, like the store coach students, and we didn't want to set up a whole separate site just to, to handle our dropship accounts. So we set up a page on our retail site that said, oh, by the way, we'll dropship too. Just provide this info and we'll set you up with a dropship account. And that was our solution was we gave them a 40% off coupon code. And then we could, it, it was absolutely streamlined. We didn't have to set up a separate operation for our dropshipping. We treated them just like retail customers. We said, you know, provide your billing details, provide your customers shipping info, and use this coupon code for 40% off and we will treat you exactly like a, a retail customer. And it worked flawlessly. So we started encouraging, you know, potential suppliers that were hesitant to set us up. We started encouraging them to do it. And at least half the time they're willing to do it. So yeah, that's a really good idea. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, so if they say we're not setting up other online retailers or we only set up big online retailers, again, this is where you need to kind of sell yourself. You specialize in this. You, this is the next market. Get on board. You don't want to miss the boat kind of thing. We're going to sell a lot of product A. We want to feature your products that, you know, we've done this in dozens of niches the last couple of years. This is the next niche we're doing it in. And, and this is a, a major reason why I usually don't have to get a domain name before I make this phone call. Um, but we'll typically make sure that the domain we want is available um, so that we can register it once we actually get a couple of supplier accounts. Um, yeah, as I tell people in the one-on-one -on -one coaching, if you're not uh, comfortable doing that, which I can understand if you've never done it before, mm -hmm. it's a good idea to get the domain name. And I actually tell them, like, if if you really, really, really want to project uh, that you're you're already a player, you build a dummy site, you put all kinds of products uh, on that site already, and when you're contacting a supplier whose products are already on your site, you turn those products off, so all they see on that site are their competitors. Yeah, yeah, you definitely you definitely don't want the brand on the site <laughs> that you're reaching out to. Because they'll say, what the hell are our products doing on your site if you're not a reseller right. of our products? I recently picked up a manufacturer because I just really wanted their products and I knew they were kind of hard to get. Uh -huh. um, by um, telling them, I just said, I'm selling this much of this already from uh, uh, 
your competitor or whatever, and I listed the brand, and their their stuff was already on the site. Granted, but I was selling maybe a fifth of what I told them I was selling. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no way for them to check that stuff, and they immediately signed me up. Yeah, and there's 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 really no way for them to even check to see if you're working for the company. Uh, I think I've just had four <laughs> orders in six months since that or whatever. So. <laughs> yeah. It's yep. Just, just what you've got it. Put in the door. It. Yep. Right. So once you've got it, you've got it. And like we talked about before, um, you can always, whether it's for your placeholder site, you, you can become an affiliate for another major retailer, Amazon or, or one of the big retailers in that specific niche. And a lot of times affiliate sites do so well that, and they're so low maintenance that we just leave them affiliate sites. <laughs> we're like, man, we're not going to double our our margins and deal with customers and orders and stuff when this affiliate site's already making 1500 a month, let's just do a different site instead. But it also Especially works. It's one of those really complicated products that gets lots of questions. Yeah. Yeah. Technical <laughs> or like need to do a massive alarm installation yeah. questions yeah. and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Although you, if you're following the store coach training, you should be avoiding that stuff in the first place. But, <laughs> yes, <you should. laughs> um, and again, you can always, um, ask about distributors. So, all right, let's push through. I think we're most of the way through this. Let's push through these last few slides here. Um, more, more good resources on everything we've discussed and, and a lot more detail on some of the things that we've kind of, you know, just skimmed across, although we've gone into every, everything in a lot more detail than I was anticipating. But, um, a, a good post by, by coach Scott here is on our blog and here's the URL. It's called finding a supplier. It's like butter. That's a, that's a really good blog post that really goes into detail about buttering up and, and, and you know, selling yourself to a potential supplier, a lot of good tips in there. And then obviously we have the store coach forum where we, I mean, you, the, the coaches, spend a lot of time in there you know a lot of the a lot of the community members are asking questions related to dealing with suppliers we we constantly ask answer questions about you know what to put on this field of my dealer application and what do i say when the supplier asks me this and you know that type of stuff so all right. It looks like we're going to do the mock call with a potential supplier here. Well, there's a couple questions here I think we should address just in case people drop out here. But I'm okay. just <laughs> typing a reply or two here. I'm posting those links on the chat here, too. Um, we had, let's see, I've written these down. Um, a question about from Adam. He said, I, I've got a niche website, but I need accessories too. And before he answered that one, there was a very um, related one uh, immediately after that by an M. Calderoni. I have the niche and website, but need the accessories to complement niche through dropship. I'm the manufacturing dealer for my niche, but have very little traffic to the site, business mainly word of mouth. Um, so what do you have an answer for how they find the accessories for a niche? Really? If they've just got the main niche. Yeah, really your best bet is going to be a distributor in that situation because like I said exactly. early on, a uh, manufacturer is going to generally carry their product line, which is typically going to be like what 10 to 10 to 50 SKUs of the main money product, the product that you try to make $100 plus per order on. If you need accessories, you want a distributor because distributors, a lot of distributors have hundreds of thousands of SKUs covering thousands of brands. Um, for example, you'll have distributors in like sporting goods and anything and everything you can think of related to like a Dick sporting goods kind of store, it, they have available to you. So, and really your, your best, your best source for, for finding a distributor, you can obviously do some Google searches and, and sometimes that'll give you, you know, garbage results, but sometimes you'll actually find a diamond in the rough and actually find a distributor site. But I would just call up your rep with your current manufacturer or, or you know, who, whoever, whoever you work with for the brand that, that you've sourced and just tell them, you know, I'm looking for accessories, add-ons. I have customers ask about accessories and add-ons. I need them. 
um, what distributors do you know of? Who who can you or refer me to? Is there anybody that you recommend? I'm sure you get this question too. Yeah. Exactly what I was thinking is the answer to that. Yep. Yeah, that's the route I'd go for sure. Um, then there was one from uh, – okay, I already answered that in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I had one that came in – separate on a Skype of mine from Carmen that says I don't have any other websites that I can tell them that I've set up so I'm nervous about telling a supplier that I specialize in setting up niche sites and have dozens of them what do I do Mm -hmm. well I mean really tell them that you tell them that you work for one of our sites (laughs) <laughs> I right. mean, well, I've, I'll tell you something. I've got it. Um, I kind of addressed that in the butter article, um, just in case uh, you don't you don't see the link or forget it. If you go to uh, store coach, just type the word butter in search. You'll find the article immediately. Mm-hmm. You just have to remember butter. But um, you can <laughs> do a lot of different things there. Um, I I. You know, it, it's tough. Everybody's uh, wired a little bit differently. I try not to lie. Um, That's no fun. I, well, I mean, I try not to. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm just <laughs> being targeted. I, I try not to. It's bad. I don't mind it if it's not hurting anybody. Right. Um, That's how I but, am too. Um, like I, I pointed out in that article, and I did earlier in the call, there's no way in the world they'll know what companies you've worked for, what you've done, or whatever. And if you can find a site, probably not one that's right in that same niche, right. but somewhere that's a close neighbor, and say, well, you helped set up that site and get it ranked and stuff, they're never going to know. Yeah, try to find a shoulder niche. I mean, if you if you want to if you want to sell pet beds, find a top ranking specialty site that sells parrot cages or dog houses. And right. say that you say that you work for the company that created this, and you you know you help source wholesale products, and now we're moving into pet beds, and we're gonna right. create the last pet thing beds the world now. You wanna, right. The last thing in the world you want to do is say, well, this is the first website I've ever built, and I'm new at this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I just <laughs> that <laughs> there, there may be a sympathetic person out there, but I'm yeah. finding them few and far between yeah, in that, the world. Anymore. Well, that. That tells them that you saying that is that exactly the same as saying, hey, whatever time you spend helping me get a dealer account set up is going to be a waste because I'm never going to place an order with you. Right. <laughs> so that's not the impression you want to give them. And and honestly, keep in mind, too, that when I give this spill that we specialize in this and this is the newest niche we're going into, we're going to be number one in Google within 90 days, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 95% of the time, they never ask for an example site. They never even ask again what company I work for or any of that. I mean, they basically are typically impressed. They ask a few standard follow-up questions, and they tell me how to apply for a dealer account. End of story. So don't don't worry about all of the what-ifs. They're, right. Most of them are highly it's, unlikely. You're never going to... If you spend your entire life worrying about like the what ifs, if you're figuring out ways to fail, you do. Yep. You just the, the worst thing that can possibly happen is they say no, and you're exactly where you were before. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, exactly. I got another one. I forgot to write down who asked it. Um, doesn't a site look strange with only one supplier when all the other websites in my niche have many more? How do you get around that? Um, not really. I mean, well, a couple things to keep in mind here. There, there are a lot of specialty retail sites built around a specific brand. So, I mean, honestly, I would say probably 30% of our stores never have more than one brand. So it's not like it's not like you're you, you got to realize your customers are going to look at your website and your web pages a lot differently than than a manufacturer or one of your competitors is. A competitor might look at it and go, "Wow, this is weird. They only have such and such brand. Why don't they have the other nine major brands?" But a customer is there for ABC dog beds. You have ABC dog beds. Where do I buy? They don't. They're not going to analyze your site and wonder why you don't have other brands and all that like you're going to. Um, so I could tell you what I did, 
As I, I just spun it um, with the first one. I I, I made it uh, on the home page and very and the the brand page and the category page. And I'm like, we carry this one manufacturer because this is the best one. Right. Basically, that's a simple thing. Saying other sites you go to, you get very confused. Everything seems the same and stuff. We wanted to make it simple for you and give you the very best brand. Now, they exactly. may not be the best brand at all. Now, when you pick up brand number two, we carry the two top brands. You just tweak it a little yeah. bit. Yeah, we, we pretty much do that with every three, store we do. Number four and number five, you just keep tweaking it. Yeah, we only carry the elite brands now that you carry five. That's right, <laughs> right. But yeah. that's what I do. It's all about it's all about your positive spin. I mean, remember you're marketing here. That's that's marketing. You're selling your product. So right. So that that that's not that hard to do. Um, and then somebody did ask this one too. And why? I'm just very bad. I didn't write down the name. What should I put down as business references on an application when I don't have any? Something tells me that was Luke, but I don't know why. It was Luke or Edward asked that. Well, I mean, that's a that's a really good question, and we've we've answered that in the forum. But well, a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, one, as soon as you've worked with any suppliers whatsoever, even if you've never placed an order with them, you can provide them as references. Um, and like we talked about before. The person, if if they actually call on these references, which is rare, uh, the person that answers is going to look up your account. Yep, they have an account. Looks like it's in good standing. End of call. There was a positive reference for you, even though you've had that account for a week and you've never placed an order. Two, for most dro- most dropship type accounts, you don't need references. You don't need credit terms. You don't need any of that garbage. You need a cur- you need a credit card or a debit card. You can give them. So you can place orders with them, period. Right. So. I think that's one thing that that some of these people you're talking to don't realize when you're initially talking. They, they're they so used to dealing with the bigger accounts where they've got net 30 terms and stuff mm-hmm. like that. That's what makes them nervous dealing with somebody that, that they've never done business with before is you need to stress to them right off the bat, I'll be paying for the products the moment they're ordered. Yeah, before it leaves your dock, you've already been paid. <laughs> There's no risk for you. Um, yeah, in fact, that was it, Edward. I guessed right. Yeah. Um. In, in fact, back in the day, before we had business references, well, when I was solo, I'd put a little star next to the trade references question, and I would I would basically just put a sentence that explains, you know, I'm not looking for credit terms here. I I'm gonna be placing i'm going to be buying the product before you ship the product and that's it that's i didn't even put the trade references i didn't even put yeah, any of the credit related info and and the I've applications approved that's, so. that's probably the best thing to do i like called up friends and stuff and said hey if you get a call say you're with yeah that's a great area uh, i was like what george on seinfeld or something <laughs> um <laughs> there was one more from uh, Michael Von Flew, which was, do you ask about margins when trying to get an account? That's, for me, I don't know if you feel differently about this, Scott, but I wait until it looks like I've got the account locked down. So that's one of my that's one of my very end questions. So I'll typically say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> I'll, I'll typically say something along the lines of, "Oh, this is so awesome! Thanks, Tom, for you know taking taking the time to talk to me. Oh, by the way, you know, just between I, I know that you can't disclose wholesale pricing until I'm an, an approved dealer, but can you just give me like a ballpark estimate on what kind of margins like I can a expect?" Fixed product. That's yeah. <laughs> yep. Before I before I take the time to fill out this application and start building out this store and get the team going, I want to make sure that there's actually margins here. We've actually taken the time in the past to set up dealer accounts and then come to find out after you know hours of work that there's not going to be margins and we can't list their products. Yeah, I have so. a funny feeling I know exactly an example of story you're talking about now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I generally I don't even worry about it because. Um, like with the current site that I have, I have some things that I make as little as eight percent on, and some that I make twenty. And 
although I'm not going to intentionally tell somebody to buy something that I'm making 20% on that is inferior to the thing that's eight, if it's at least as good, I absolutely am going to promote that product more. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a funny feeling that anybody who's really, really undercutting is not getting even close to the business that their competitors are. But I, I honestly don't worry about it because I get the account, I use it or I don't. Mm -hmm. Only person it hurts down the road if I don't is that next person who tries calling them and setting up an account. Yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Here comes another one that's never going to use us. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah. Also keep in mind, I mean, I, I say this throughout the training on store coach, we don't care what the margin percentage is. We care about how many dollars we net per processed order. So it really doesn't matter if it's 80% margins or 8% margins. If I'm making $120 for every order I process, that's awesome. Period. I don't care what my percentage margin is. So keep that yeah, in mind I, too. Me neither. Me neither at all. I think people get way up too obsessed over margin. I'm just like, how much money am I making? Yeah, we don't we don't um, even calculate it. The only time it really matters is if you're selling tons of a small item. For example, one of the one of the sites we have right now, we sell we have like twelve to sixteen orders a day, and all of our orders are like between ten and thirty dollar items, which is what we teach people not to do. Um, but the reason we like it is because the margins are over fifty percent. So all of those orders add up to be several hundred dollars a day, or at least a few hundred dollars a day, and that fifty percent margin is awesome. Um, and the order processing is automated because it, it all right. Well, I. I, I told people in, um, that are in the one-on-one -on -one training or whatever, one of the sites I used to own, you know I owned the site, was a site that sold um, just basically knockoff beads for Pandora bracelets. We didn't call them that. Um, but uh -huh. they were uh, back before you could find them all over the place when the Pandora bracelets first came out. Um, and you had to pay 50 to 150 bucks for a bead. Um, I was selling beads on this website for five dollars and ninety nine cents, which were very nice looking beads, but you know they were they weren't Pandora, but mm -hmm. they fit great on the bracelet and they look good. And people were like, "How are you making any money selling something that costs five dollars and ninety nine cents?" Mm -hmm. I said, "Well, first of all, I pay forty two cents a bead mm -hmm. for them. Second of all, the average order is eight beads." So my average order was forty dollars profit. So make sure that you're remembering what will the average order be, um, and not necessarily a single product. Some sites, if you're selling, I don't know, um, <laughs> a doghouse, it's going to be one order. Uh, it's one thing they're going to order right. probably. Yeah, um, you have to you have to anticipate the pencils and stuff. It may be several things. If you're selling vitamin supplements or something, they may be buying all kinds of things. Yeah. So it's the average order. Um, I have a thing from Rita Purdue that says, "Can I make a suggestion? Just sure. because a company will drop ship their products, if the products are crap." That's what it says. You will <laughs> pay the price with poor customer reviews and need to check for dropship fees and manufacturer return policy. Some I work with have a 50% restocking fee, which means customers <laughs> I sell to are not going to be happy. Right. Well, I can tell you the answer to that myself right now, but I'm going to hear yours. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> if you were if you were following following the, I mean, that's a great comment and suggestion you do need to watch out for the that kind of stuff but if you're following our training that's all covered that's all part of the the uh supplier interview questions you make sure their policies aren't crazy you make sure their products aren't crap and really by by following these steps and identifying the top brands in the market th these top these top retail sites in the market in that specific niche that are selling the 8 to 10 or 12 best brands Believe me, they are not selling the headache brands after years and years and years. They might have had them two, three, six, eight years ago, but because the supplier was a pain in the butt, they moved on. 
and they don't carry them anymore. So you're I kind can tell of you red flag right off the bat. There, the fifty percent restocking fit. I've never heard of that. Twenty five percent seen, and that's <laughs> out of control. You see, fifty percent restocking fee. You know, you're dealing with somebody who gets a lot of products returned. Yeah, they need to. They need to be making money off returns because their products are so awful. But I mean, it really, really, if you focus on the top brands in in your niche, you're kind of pre qualifying. You know, you're, you're very rarely going to run into that kind of stuff because the top retail sites in that niche that have been around for a while, they don't carry those garbage brands. They, they don't carry that stuff. And that's and that's another thing you can feel warm and fuzzy about on the inside, too, is you truly are selling the top brands. So when you market them, when you sell them, you don't need to feel like you're conning people. You know, you're not you're not a, a, a flea market stand selling garbage and then running into the next town, you know, overnight, you're, you're going to stick around. So you're only selling the brands that are reputable and the other retailers have pre-qualified those brands. So, um, we, we better okay, since, got people begging us here to get onto the mock call. Yeah. Well, I was going to say we're, we're <laughs> already 15 minutes over and we kind of moved to the Q and a to be before the mock call because we answered everybody's questions just now. Let's do the mock call quick. And then That's if there's fault. a couple follow-up questions, we can do it. But we've really we've really done a pretty good Q&A already. And just to warn you guys, I mean, this, this, this is improv. And really the main point of this is to hear my intro spill, which I've already kind of summarized and given you most of the pieces from anyway. So, but yeah, let's, let's do it. Okay. Ring, so, ring. So I'm not going to make you buy any products. How can I help you? Well, I was going to say I'm not going to make you pretend to be the secretary, but. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, sorry. Hello, Acme Products. How can I help you? (laughs) Hi there. Uh, This is Dave Hermanson. I I am in charge of setting up wholesale accounts for a retail company called StoreStream LLC. Can I speak with whoever handles setting up wholesale dealer type accounts with your company? That would be Roy. Let me patch you through. Thank you. Hello, this is Roy. Hi, Roy. My name is Dave Hermanson. I am with a company called StoreStream LLC. What what we do, what we focus on is we actually build specialty niche e-commerce stores. We have a network of, of them and we've done dozens of them over over the last several years and actually have dozens of them today. What we specialize in is we will actually find a niche market uh, based on a keyword phrase that we know we can get to the top of Google for and and quickly and and get a lot of traffic. And we have identified pet beds and specifically your brand name, Acme Pet Beds, as a phrase that we know we can get ranked for quickly and we can get a ton of traffic for. And basically, I'm just interested in learning how we can feature your products on our newest website in this specific niche. Uh, Dave, that was Dave, right? Yeah, yes. Um, <clears throat> we honestly, we, we only work with, with brick and mortar stores. Um, we're, we're selling bulk to them and we don't, you know, uh, we don't deal with websites. Okay, yeah, that, that's that's understandable, and and we we actually hear that a lot. Uh, the the only thing I would say before you know I don't want to take too much more of your time here, but uh, like I said, we we really I mean our our focus is getting ranked in Google and, and getting a lot of traffic, and on top of that, we do a lot of paid advertising. We actually have a, a, a person on our team here that does pay-per-click traffic. So day one, we're, we're driving a lot of traffic and we're, we're actually already featuring fluffy pet beds and plush pet beds. Uh, or we've already sourced those and, and we're going to feature those on our site, but, but we'd really, we'd really like to highlight your products. I mean, based on the reviews that I'm reading online and, and all the research that the team's done, you guys are, are kind of number one. I, I don't know if you're actually the number one sellers, you know, gross volume wise, but from reviews, you're you're one of the most impressive brands that, that people. Oh, we actually, definitely make a better product than fluffy or plush. 
Yeah, and that, and that's why we we really want to feature you guys. And 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 I know that you get a lot of these type of accounts, especially now with the internet booming and everybody wanting to do online stores and do websites and all that. I'm sure you get bombarded with these cars, these calls, and you don't want you don't want people wasting your time. You don't want to you don't want to take the time to set up you know dealer account after dealer account. I, I, I've actually I've actually worked for a a manufacturing company similar to yours, and I know that one in every Every 20 or 30 accounts you set up actually ever places an order, but I can I can assure you that it's not going to be a waste of time to set us up. Uh, we I we, just I, I just don't think we're set up that way. We just you know we've got our shipping department and they're putting things in giant boxes, sending them out. You know you can understand from our point of view that it's it's much more cost effective for us to have. Um, places that are ordering 20, 50, 100 at a time. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I mean, you're you're the manufacturer. I, I assume that that you mainly move product by by selling it to distributors in bulk. That that totally makes sense. So, uh, I, I guess I guess at this point, I mean, I, I can understand you're not set up to do drop shipping. If you if you do have a, a retail site where where you actually sell product to the end users. Um, one possible solution while, while we get our feet wet and kind of test this market is maybe, maybe you can set us up with like a 20, 25, 30% discount code and, and we can just place our orders on the retail site for now and kind of test the waters and see how we work together and that type of thing. And if that, if that doesn't work for you, maybe you can set me up with, with the contact details for, for a couple of your distributors. I think there's a good chance that that they'd be likely to to drop ship for us, and and honestly, we'll probably end up ordering in bulk. That's what we do for a lot of the niches. After we, you know, figure out what sells best and figure out where to put our money as far as inventory goes, we'll probably end up ordering in bulk here in the near future. But but we want to we want to kind of test the market first, but before we you know m- make any major inventory commitments. Well, I, I can definitely give you the name of some of the distributors for our company. Okay, great. All right. That would be XXXXX. Well, Incidentally, but, uh, but, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, they get it. Uh, so, so right. I'm, uh, the call would end right around there. Yep, and honestly, um, honestly, nowadays, guys – like I said, back in the day, drop shipping was new and it was like the devil to even mention that word. And if people knew what it was and you'd have to pe- talk people off a ledge when you mention drop shipping. Nowadays, I would say 60% of the manufacturers you call will, well, maybe not 60%, probably, probably 90% total will either drop ship for you or they will give you contact details for a distributor that will probably drop ship for you. So right now, keep in mind, I was trying to be the the, the hard case there. Yeah. Also, the other thing that Dave might have suggested in that call was that Fluffy and Plush are kind of in similar circumstances, but the way they defray that employee cost is they charge an extra seven dollars and fifty cents handling charge on the drop ship. Right. Yeah. For their time. Yep, I was already um, blabbing on, so I didn't want to go into too much more <laughs> detail. But okay, but so we can do. Um, you want to do another type of call <laughs> where it's not quite that crazy, uh, just a different objection. Well, I don't think we need to do another mock call. What I was going to say is, is really the way the way the average phone call is going to go is after your initial spill, they're going to say, yeah, yeah, we can set you up. And then you basically follow up and say, hey, we love to start off by drop shipping. Do you, do you guys actually do onesie, twosie orders direct to consumers? And more, more often than not, they're going to say, yep, we do that. Uh, the dealer apps are located at or give me your email address so I can send you the dealer apps. And if they that just that straight- happens a lot more now than it did seven years ago. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'd, I'd say at least half the time that's the case. And and most of the remaining half the time they say, you know what, we don't drop. Sh-. It, it basically goes like that call, just that mock call did. We don't drop ship. We're not set up for that. We're not going to make exceptions. Most most manufacturers don't retail direct to, to the consumer. So the coupon code thing won't work. So 
they'll give you their distributors info. And usually they have at least one or two distributors and they'll kind of, kind of, if you've been polite and positive and upbeat, they'll say, these are our favorite. Talk to Jeff over at ABC Distributing Inc. Here's, here's his phone number and here's his email address. So most of the time it's going to go one of those two ways and you're set. It helps to do a little bit of research ahead of time. Uh, today I was looking at a new niche and I found two that looked like they were actual manufacturers I could contact. And then I found three others that said they were manufacturers, but they also had retail sites. Mm -hmm. So I know if I'm calling them, I can try as a last resort that discount code with a retail thing on them because I know ahead of time they got a retail site. Yeah, exactly. Up there. Up. Yep, yep. And you basically want to convince them that it's their idea and that it works with their current system. <laughs> Right. And you'll also see that in my uh, that butter article, one of the things that I suggest is if you just get even a hint of positive um, energy from them, say what I, what I, I'm wondering is what your top products are because we'd like to feature those on the homepage. What would you suggest go would we should put there? Mm -hmm. If they answer that question, you're in. Mm -hmm. Yep. Totally. All right, cool. Um, well, we kind but, of went out uh, of order, but I think we've covered a ton. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, are there any other questions that have come in before I, we wrap uh, up? Well, I was talking, so you know I can't chew gum and like walk at the same time here. <laughs> uh, yeah, because when I asked for trade reference, did that? Can I make it sit there? Can I make some more call? Um, all I got is thanks, guys, and really great guys. Do you, are there any more questions out there? Or is there something you'd like to see covered that wasn't covered? Or I know we're way over. Yeah, I, not only are we we way over, but we covered a lot. I mean, a lot. <laughs> it, between between what's in phase two of the training and 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 what we've covered, I mean, it's all there. <laughs> um, all right. Somebody asked, so you uh, prefer to sell products that are expensive? Yeah, I, I mean, know what my answer is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not not necessarily expensive, but we want the average order total to be a hundred, if not a few hundred. We don't want it to be crazy expensive, especially for your first store, because you're not going to be great at spotting the occasional fraud, and and you might have a little bit of a challenge getting uh, your merchant account set up to to be able to accept credit cards. I would avoid order totals over a, over a thousand, but really what we consider the sweet spot is products that are like 250 to 750 for the average order total not the per product total the average cart order total the checkout total um yeah i think i, I forget who it is it might have been a udarian or whatever he kind of broke it down and said that um um women i'm uh, sorry to make generalizations here women generally will spend $75 to $100, $150 on a website without blinking an eye. Mm -hmm. Men will spend up to $250 without blinking an eye or talking to their spouse. When you start getting over that amount, now all of a sudden your conversion rates fall mm -hmm. because they've got to talk to somebody else when there's two heads involved or more decisions aren't made as quickly or at all and there's much more price comparison shopping going on right and it also depends on what type of product you have because it's not really an impulse buy if it's a thousand dollars right now me personally i prefer to sell things that are 400 bucks and up because mm -hmm. <laughs> because when i've got a product that costs that i know out the gate i can advertise mm -hmm. yep yeah, you would be being um, able to I'm do paper click helps. If I'm making eighty bucks on something, then it costs me fifty dollars to sell. It's thirty dollars in my pocket. It costs me thirty dollars. Uh, my my experience has been, and it all depends on the niche again. Is somewhere in around the thirty to thirty five dollar niche for expensive um, niches is what it takes to convert off something like Google Shopping. Mm -hmm. so I'll yep. do the rest of my life if I'm making a hundred bucks on something and it cost me 35 to sell it that's what I'll do the rest of my life 
Yep. <laughs> it, 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 so it's it kind of. And once your on rankings the come around, you're making triple as much because those conversions don't cost you anything. Exactly. With with one of my sites at the very beginning, ninety eight percent probably was coming just off of ads, and then like four months later, now it was down to ninety, and then a year later it was down to seventy five, and now four years later with that site, ten percent comes from advertising the other 90 percent are from organic i'm spending exactly the same today on advertising i was on day one yep yeah it's awesome but 90 percent of my money is coming from organic that i don't have to pay for yeah exactly hey uh, dave near gardener i think hopefully i'm pronouncing that right dave submitted a good question here real quick uh do you guys wait until the money from the site hits paypal yeah, i just saw that one or whoever before you get it shipped out so the money will be in your account before it's subtracted uh this is for somebody just starting out that that basically doesn't have a big balance yeah i, I was in that position when i started out dave um so so my advice here I'm is still in that position on some days. <laughs> yeah, depending on how rich you feel that day. Um, well, no, I'll have ten thousand dollars in orders in a day. Yeah, yeah, true. Yep. <laughs> uh, well, a couple things to keep in mind. One, if you have a business credit card or even a personal card that you're using as as your exclusive business card, you're not going to have to pay that balance for at least twenty five days. So. I would recommend using a credit card with that supplier to pay for the order and get that order submitted and sent out right away because technically you're really supposed to get it on its way before you even capture and hold on to the customer's funds. Um, technically. Yeah. Um, you don't really have to, but uh, really you should be capturing funds and shipping on the same day or within a day or two. And that's the approach that we take. Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, but that's the approach I'd take. I'd, I'd pay with credit card. You have a month to pay that without finance fees or late fees or whatever. Um, and in the meantime, it's only going to take two to four business days for your money to actually hit your bank account from from PayPal or, or your merchant account provider. So that's right. the approach now, I'd if take. If you're using Durango on a Visa, MasterCard, or Discover card, it hits your uh, account two business days later. American Express is three business days. Um, if you're somebody who doesn't have like the greatest credit in the world and the credit card, but you got a check card, there's another thing you can do here. Um, you can put in your terms and conditions, and I actually like to put it on the product page. These orders generally take two to three days for the warehouse to process and ship. Mm -hmm. um, and as long as you have that to fall back on, um, nobody reads it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and if you get the once in a blue moon, I'd say, you know, it happens once every 30, 40 orders or so. Somebody's like, hey, did this ship already? Uh, unfortunately, uh, perhaps you didn't read this or whatever. We try to keep customers informed, but we understand not everybody reads everything. Um, it generally takes the web, uh, the warehouse two to three days to ship this, but we will definitely inform you the second we get a, the tracking code. Mm -hmm. And yep. I've never in my life had anybody put up a stink about it. Yep. Um, it's, as long as, you know, you just put it nicely like that. Yep. Um, that should really. Just kind that of two to three days processing really was waiting for the money to hit your account. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And that's what that's really what I did. What you just described. That's really what I did for Everything Birds, my first store, because my literally like my water was being turned off. My power bill was two months late. My mortgage <laughs> payment was two months late. I I, 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 I credit card. I literally, I mean, this is 2000, 2003. I had a, a baby, a baby, a new house, a new wife, and was going to college and working. And I literally didn't have a credit card or any way to pay for, for these things. So I literally had to like, check every morning to see how much money had, had actually come from my merchant account to see what priority I, I would place on on getting the oldest order shipped out, <laughs> submitted with the supplier. So, and keep in mind too, not, not only as, as you make more sales and, and get more in your bank account, um, not, not only can you have a credit card that gives you a month to pay without fees and all that jazz, but you can also 
as you build relationships with your suppliers, they'll do things like batch your orders once a week. So once they trust yeah, you, yeah, I have I have one supplier because on even on my on most people's credit cards, there is actually a daily limit on it. Yeah. Where your credit card, whatever, uh, Visa, Bank of America, whoever holds that, says, we will not take more than three thousand dollars a day in uh, charges on this card. Yeah. And I many many times had ten thousand dollars worth of charges that I needed to make in a day. And the supplier says, "We'll just keep every day try putting another three thousand on until we catch up." Yeah, yep. You know? And and a lot of times they'll let you they'll they'll batch your orders. Oh, at they'll the give end me of, that thirty. So yeah, they'll they'll batch your orders at the end of the month and say, "Hey, you owe us eighty seven thousand dollars, and you can send a single check." So right. as right. you build oh, relationships, yeah, my wife and, didn't know that when she went to the mall yesterday. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, real quick, before we wrap this up, we, we really have to. I think this is a record for length. Um, a couple important because announcements. Because it was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Scott is the, the co-host here instead of Kev. Um, actually, Kev's a talker too. But uh, a couple important announcements on Store Coach next month. We are, I mean, the, the site's staying the same. The structure's staying the same and all that. We are, we are improving greatly improving the link thief tool to help with link building and um if you didn't hear the previous announcement link thief unlimited is now available with every pro account um so if you're a pro and you still have a a, a, the cheesy little 10 target limit light plan shoot us an email and and we'll push you up to the unlimited plan all new signups get unlimited link thief the the niche finding tool our keyword tool is being renamed, I think, Niche Ninja Pro, and it's it's getting some huge improvements that are that are going to make it even easier to to find phrases that you can easily get to the top of Google for. Um, and along with all of those updates, the if you're not a pro yet, the sign up price is going to 500 instead of right now it's 97. dollars So if you're ever going to become a pro. Do it before the first week of January because the price is going up by five times <laughs> as much for, for the registration fee. Um, if you saw the mailing last month, um, it, private coaching is available. That's what Scott runs. Um, and private coaching is awesome for people that are in this early stage where they're choosing a niche and, and reaching out to suppliers and all that. And they're nervous about it and they want somebody there to talk to. Uh, if you want a weekly phone call and, and, and daily Skype chat hour um, with Coach Scott, we're still, we've extended the half off the first month offer. Um, we're, we, it was that, very, very popular this month, and today we've got like no time. But Yeah, we've, we've had to talk um, but, Scott into but, rearranging his schedule and opening up more time <laughs> to take on more. My wife didn't mind it all. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that half off for the first month offer is still out there. If you want help and advice choosing your niche and getting your store set up and reaching out to suppliers and all that, um, you can have Scott here to talk to daily, every week day, uh, and and a weekly phone call for goal planning. Yeah. And In addition that. to that, I kind of specialize with on-page SEO, so I can show you exactly how to set up every single page of your website so that it ranks for specific things. Yep. Yeah. My, Scott is my Scott is the king of on-page SEO, so <laughs> uh, getting help optimizing your pages for the right keyword phrases. He's, he's the man for that. A lot of people use the, the private coaching for the first three or four months while they get their, you know, they get their niche chosen. They, they get suppliers and they actually get help creating the website itself. And then they're just kind of good and they can kind of take it from there. So, but it's really awesome for people early on. So, but that's it. We don't really want to hard sell anything. And we already did the open Q&A. We flip flopped that. But um, my wife is impatiently waiting in the other room. So, and we're more than a half hour I over. So. To the mall. <laughs> <laughs> that would hurt the pocketbook too much. So <laughs> uh, it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well thanks everybody for joining us and we we did record this so as long as the the recording didn't get corrupted like which has happened a couple times 
we will be posting this tomorrow and we will send a link out to everybody uh, through the newsletter system. So thanks for uh, being here tonight and hopefully this was extremely valuable info for you. Um, have a good night. Bye-bye.